Thank you, Nancy. Good morning, welcome to our worship service this first Sunday morning in the month of June. We are here at First Presbyterian Church in Salem, Ohio, and we are glad you have joined with us in worship. It is a difficult time in our country. Our patience is being tried every day. Let us do our best to keep cooler heads and remain calm. Let us trust in and rely on God to help us through all that we're going through. And now let us prepare our hearts for worship. Let us worship God. Please join me in the call to worship. Mighty wind who danced over the deep and surveyed the shapeless void, dance over us now and ready us for your creative purpose. Divine word who commanded unruly chaos and called forth light and life, call to us now and open us to a new expression of grace. Eternal artist who formed us in your likeness and claimed us as kin, reform and refine us to be bearers of your blessing. Holy Trinity, creator, Christ, spirit, who gathered the primeval waters, gather us in, then send us out, our voices echoing creation's song. How majestic is your name in all the earth. For God so loved the world that God gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God sent the son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Let us confess our need for God's saving love. Lord Jesus, you sent us to make disciples of all nations, but we focus our energies inward and shy away from sharing the good news in word and deed. You charge us to teach your commandments, but we struggle to obey them and neglect to model them for others. You assure us of your abiding presence, but we doubt this promise and disregard your spirit, denying the power you gave us to do your work. Forgive us, Lord, and renew us to be the church you created us to be. Wash us with your grace and commission us for service. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven.
Let us pray. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is Psalm 8. Listen for the word of God. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemies and the adventure. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them, Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew. It's the very last verses in Matthew beginning with verse 16 from chapter 28. Please listen for God's word and how it speaks to you this morning. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee 
to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. I had two small dogs for a number of years. They were long in body but short in their legs. And nearly every morning when I would let them out into the backyard, I would say something like, go get them. It was just a phrase, a brief command, and I knew that they didn't understand me, or so I thought, until one spring. That was when they brought me five birds, two moles and one squirrel. A pretty good haul for two small dogs with short legs. Enough, I'd say, but of course they didn't understand me. They would play with these poor dead animals until I would come along and have to pick them up and throw them away. Afterwards, when I let them out, when these animals were gone, I would finally say, now be good, little doggies. No more killing. It disturbs daddy. We are awestruck by the incredible majesty of God, the vastness of the created world that surrounds us. Today's psalmist says, you have set your glory above the heavens. And we agree that the beauty of the earth is beyond our imagination. And yet the sheer magnitude of the universe causes us at times to feel small or estranged or lost. No one really knows me. The psalmist's words strike at the heart of our being. What are human beings that you're mindful of them? We may ask ourselves, where am I going? Where am I leading my family? God, who am I that you would care for me? Whoever and wherever you are, as a parent or a grandparent or a close friend, as a young person, or someone with many years of wisdom, you are highly valued in God's magnificent world. That's why it pains us so to see violence perpetrated on our own citizens and indiscriminate looting and destruction of people's property. The psalmist reminds us that God made us a little lower than God and crowned <coughs> and crowned us with glory and honor. So feeling confident, feeling just a little lower than God, we puff out our chest and we stand tall and we march and we protest and we love and we also go to war. We raise families and we work hard and we play hard. And when someone yells, go get them, it only seems quite natural for us to do just that. We rush into burning buildings. We work night and day to save the lives of sick people. We jump into swollen rivers and into frozen ponds to save others' lives. But if I'm called to save lives, then I must first embody the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus means when he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus' instructions to his disciples is about saving lives. 
Most of us were raised in loving Christian homes. We've raised our own children and our children's children with love and the teachings of Jesus Christ, including an attitude of confidence and fearlessness, unafraid and confident and you can do it attitude because we're made just a little lower than God. Perhaps this one verse has provided the egocentric personality of so many in today's culture. After all, being a little lower than God is pretty awesome company to be in. And so we tell our loved ones to go get them, go for it. You can do it. We encourage them and we build them up and we want only the best for them. But as Christians, we're uncomfortable when others don't have the same opportunities that we've been given. God gives us the entire world and all the living things in it, but it is a huge responsibility. And our responsibility is to make disciples, to save lives, to shepherd others as we watch over this incredible world with all the people and the animals and the land, all that's within it. If we are to shepherd this world, then we, we need to acknowledge the tremendous responsibility it is. Go get them sounds a lot of machismo, big egos involved, but a little lower than God. Oh yeah, that's the kicker. We believe we're pretty important stuff and we're speaking about human beings, all men and women and children who are included in Psalm 8, all mortals, given the vastness and complexity of God's universe, why would you, oh God, take note of and care deeply for even one human being? But God does take note of us. God does care for us. When God crowns us with glory and honor, how do we react? I remember growing up and playing on sports teams. In high school and college, I won a few championships, but I also endured one very long losing season without one win. Team sports teaches us about a winning attitude, how everyone has certain gifts and skills and all of them are needed for the team to win. And it's the same with our Christian faith. We're a team of brothers and sisters in Christ and we need an attitude of gratitude for what Christ has done for us in our lives to be able to share that with others. This is what Jesus is calling us to do in the gospel reading from Matthew. In essence, Jesus is encouraging us to be unafraid and to go out there. Yes, go get them. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We can do this. We can make disciples for our Lord and Savior because our confidence lies in the authority given to Jesus. And when Jesus gives that authority to his disciples, they in turn make new disciples who have that same authority all the way down through history to each one of us. Jesus' authority in heaven and on earth is given to us to make new disciples. Wow, that is powerful. And that gives us a lot to ponder. What can we do with that authority? Yet we know that some people doubted, as the scripture says. Some stayed in the background, making others feel that they were alone when doing Christ's work. Not much team effort there. Doesn't make for a championship team of any kind. 
We need everyone to be on the same page, in sync, as they say, together, of one mind, and in Christian language, of one body. But Jesus isn't bothered by the doubters, and neither should we. Doubts tell us that at least someone's paying attention. They're thinking and they're reflecting on their faith, on what's been taught, and how in their own life experiences it matches up. They will realize in God's time that they too are part of a team of disciples bringing new disciples to Jesus Christ. I confess that I had second thoughts about today's sermon title. It now seems to me as maybe insensitive and inappropriate for the current times. During this historic and fractious point in American history, the last thing I want to do is incite people to go after other people. Whether you're a protester or a law enforcement person or a bystander or a government leader, what's happening on American streets should concern all of us. It's too easy to blame others. The blame game is unproductive. It's become insidious in America. We want protection for all of our citizens. We want protection for all journalists attempting to tell the story. But we also want protection for law enforcement who are trying to do a difficult and at times dangerous job. But I'm not here to make excuses for anyone, especially myself, or for gross misconduct on the part of anyone but sooner or later, the parties have to sit down together and listen to each other. And right now, it's anyone's guess where all of this divisiveness in our country will lead. But in the meantime, there is good news, and that is we are given the authority of Jesus Christ to go out and to make disciples because Jesus is always with us. We are never alone. We can do many things to make a difference in this world. Each of us has been gifted to do something that shows God's love for his creation. May it be so. Amen. Trinity Sunday, hopefully many can enjoy some music here. Where? 
can feel the gentle breeze Then sings my song, my Savior God through thee How great thou art, how great thou art Then sings my song Thank you, Michael and Nancy. That was wonderful. I'm so grateful that we have music in our worship service. Today, our affirmation of faith comes from the Heidelberg Catechism. Let us join with the voices of long ago, the saints of our faith, as we ask the first two questions of this catechism with the appropriate response. What is your only comfort in life and in death? that I belong, body and soul, in life and in death, not to myself, but to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ, who at the cost of his own blood has fully paid for all my sins and has completely freed me from the dominion of the devil, that he protects me so well that without the will of my Father in heaven, not a hair can fall from my head. Indeed, that everything must fit his purpose for my salvation. Therefore, by his Holy Spirit, he also assures me of eternal life and makes me wholeheartedly willing and ready from now on to live for him. And the second question, how many things must you know that you may live and die in the blessedness of this comfort? And the answer is three. First, the greatness of my sin and wretchedness. Second, how I am freed from all my sins and their wretched consequences. And third, what gratitude I owe to God for such redemption. Now it's time for us to remind ourselves that the church still has expenses to pay. We are still receiving offerings through the mail and we appreciate what you are able to give us. This is a time when we normally take our offerings. We hope you'll send something in to the church. Let us come together in prayer. Let us bow humbly to our God and call on him together. Lord, our God and Father in Jesus Christ, 
We honor you with all our hearts because you are the Holy One and all the world cannot comprehend your glory. We are coming to you in hopeful confidence because you come ahead to meet us and to deliver us from a world in chaotic spasms, from a global pandemic, from racial injustice that pulls at the fabric of our country. You sent your son in order for him to take our place where we dwell in our frailty and powerlessness, in our sin and corruption. Strengthen us to stop violent actions. Help us to listen carefully to one another and find common ground to share ourselves with others. We thank you for the grace that we can be counted among the crowd of sinners who put all their hope in you. We know how much we need you and your abiding presence. Don't let us be without your word. Speak to us so that everyone will personally hear your voice and will understand your word and will receive it as light for life's journey. Forgive us, O oh Lord, forgive us that we have hardened our hearts and treated others as less than. May we hear your beckoning voice this day and treat all as your children. You never leave us without your promises. Your hand is stretched towards us all the time, but our deceitful and corrupt hearts try to pull away from you and follow our own ideas. At this moment, gathered in order to be taught by your word, we ask humbly for the Holy Spirit, for the light of your truth and the steadfast mercy of the Lord. Pass through us as through your people. Take away everything which separates us from you and from our fellow citizens. Confirm us in your truth and fill us with spirit of unity and love. Take every one of us and chisel us and fit us as living stones into the construction of your temple, into the community of your church. Take the burden of our concerns and grief, our sorrows and troubles, helplessness and illness from us. We are placing our confidence only in you. Only in you do we hope. Only for you do we wait in expectation. Bless our congregation. Answer in mercy our intimate prayers this day. And ally us with all those who are not with us today, but desire to be gathered in the community of your people. Hear us, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. These past week, 10 days have been difficult. And yet as we conclude our worship service today, I want us to go out with confidence and hope. To go out and to make disciples of others, to help save lives, to give of yourself for the betterment of all humankind. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.
bless you and keep you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace and give you peace. The Lord make his face to shine. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.